as usual, bringing you guys value and information no matter where I am. I'm super excited to be at the 29th man annual Perspectives in Urology Point Counterpoint meeting with Randy A A coin. A coin, sorry. Uh, from uh, Exact View Imaging, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. So this is, uh, this is an amazing ultrasound imaging technology uh, designed specifically for the imaging of the prostate. And you know, you guys are thinking that MRI, multi-parametric MRI imaging is the gold standard, if you will, when it comes to prostate imaging, uh, trying to diagnose, treat prostate cancer. Well, this technology has been around for several years. I first learned about it at a regional LUGPA meeting, but I've been kind of keeping an eye on it, and it is now finally coming to fruition in real life. Multiple studies have been done. Instead of the expense of an, an, an inconvenience of an uh, of MRI imaging, and some, some guys are just afraid of that, that tunnel, if you will. And uh, you know, the, you, the problem with the magnet and having uh, something metallic in a, in a person, MRI is just not as feasible and uh, convenient and also sometimes cost effective. So MRI, uh, ultrasound imaging, I mean, you and I, you, urologists, we've been doing ultrasounds forever, right? So imagine using an ultrasound to really, really look at the prostate down to the micron level using a, a transrectal probe. Imagine the ability to do that in your office. So I'm very excited to have Randy to talk about the Exact View ultrasound, which is a uh, high frequency ultrasound device, right? Yes. Yeah, so 29 megahertz high frequency ultrasound. Uh, we call it micro ultrasound. And the concept is urologists been using ultrasound for 30 years. And so when they started to have problems with detecting prostate cancer, having to do the random biopsies, and wanted to move to targeted biopsies, one stream was saying, let's use MRI to do that to get a better view of the prostate. We said, why don't we just fix the ultrasound and invent one that has enough resolution to see the cancer in the gland live. And so what you get, you get to see an image that can see the suspicious areas and you can target them in real time. And now we don't have to worry if fusion is misaligned and we miss the lesion, miss the target, because we can see the lesion. So we put a needle right through it and get a great biopsy. So that, you know, as you guys know, using an MRI is that you take that static picture and then you have to fuse it in ultrasound and then you do the biopsy. Whereas the exact view, you're looking at the lesion in real time and it looks abnormal and then you target that ultra, using the ultrasound, target that lesion, and then you can do the biopsy in real time while you're looking at the lesion. So that's, that's I think, one of the major advantages. Major, yeah, that's, that's the major advantage right there, John. And, and, you know, it's not like we're fighting with MRI. If, if, if a patient shows up and has an MRI, let's put the two together and even have it even be complementary to where we might be able to pick up some things the MRI doesn't see as well. Right. And, and then, so the two together if it's possible, but there's just in some cases the patient can't have an MRI or it's, not, it's just not feasible for them to have an MRI. And now we have a great alternative and we have now 30 publications out and, and we're showing comparable detection rates, sometimes a bit superior to MRI, but definitely comparable to multi-parametric MRI. So you now have a great alternate, alternative for the patient if MRI is not feasible for them. Yeah, and uh, keep in mind, if you are doing, as, as uh, Randy said, if you are doing fusion MRI, you can use the same uh, ultrasound device and perform fusion biopsy using this uh, particular device. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So we, we're complementary to MRI if you have availability, or it can be an alternative. You can just, just use just our micro ultrasound machine to do the biopsy, or put it with MRI if you want. Yeah. And uh, when I learned about this uh, device, there are three different modes, if you will, right? Because we, we worry about the, the anterior prostate, the big gland, and uh, imaging of, of those areas. Yeah, so, there, so we have, um, just launched a brand new version we call it whole gland imaging now where before when we first brought out the technology we were really only good for the first three centimeters of seeing the peripheral zone but now we've made some breakthrough and some we've made uh, invented some new techniques and patented them to where we can now see all the way up to six centimeters so now we've expanded our primus protocol to include the anterior zone to be able to do to target cancers in the back of the gland, you know, away from the rectal wall. And so this is a, a big breakthrough for us. We were already having great comparable studies when we were just having our Primus protocol be on the peripheral zone, but now the anterior zone has been added as well, so we expect great things there too.
Now, for those who are not familiar with what primus means, would you let, let the audience know? Sure, of course, all these acronyms, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so prostate risk identification using microultrasound. Uh, and it's really analogous to the PIRADS. Uh, you know, it's a five-point scale with one being most likely to be benign, with five being most likely to be clinically significant cancer. And it's a program we, where we teach uh, urologists uh, through our e-learning program and through on-site visits how they can have a look and say, we think that's suspicious, we should do some targeting of that area, and we think that's normal, maybe, maybe we just do systematic in that area. Now, these, ultra, these uh, ultrasound-guided imaging and, and biopsies using uh, ExactView, are they done in the office now or how have the, the, during the trials? Uh, so the majority are done in the office. That, that's, it, this is an office-based approach done by urologists. That's, that's amazing. And how many cores typically are they still doing uh, the standard uh, 12 core with targeting of the suspicious lesions or are they just doing standard 12 core or, or are they just targeting the suspicious lesion? Yeah, we have some, the different urologists have different protocols. It's definitely based there. But what we recommend is interrogate the prostate, find your targets. Uh, based on the size of that target, decide how many samples you should take to properly sample it and then fill in the rest of the gland with systematic. So that, that's, that's what we recommend and we think is the, is the um, most conservative approach to making sure nothing is missed. Yeah. Well, with the multi-parametric MRI being uh, so extremely uh, operator-dependent, integrated reliability issues, and also missing up to 47% of, of the uh, cancers, depending on which study you read, you know, a negative MRI, meaning an MRI doesn't show cancer, doesn't mean that, that there is no cancer. So that's, that's an issue. But with the exact view, hopefully we can bring that technology a little bit more forward, real-time imaging, real-time targeting, and a very forward-looking uh, thought process and question for you. I'm always thinking of ways to put myself out of business, right? You're always look, doing that SWOT analysis. And uh, in the future, I'm thinking like maybe 20, 30, 40 years, you know, when we're gone. And uh, I'm thinking of AI guided, just completely automated prostate cancer detection biopsy and, and things like that. What, what are your thoughts about that? So we're working on AI right now. And, uh, okay, I didn't know about that. Yeah, so we, have, <laughs> so we already have some uh, three uh, early publications. The data is looking uh, very good. We, we believe what, the way we will bring this out is have an assist feature for the urologist. Basically scan the prostate and, and the urologist have a look where do you think the suspicious areas are and then push a button and then the machine will say, here's some areas we think you might want to pay attention to as well. And then we think what that does is no matter how busy the day is and the last patient of the day versus the first patient of the day, yeah, yeah. it takes out some of those environmental factors that might miss something. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we think it'll be, and we think all the urologists we spoke to, they thought this would be great and it was well received. It wasn't threatening, it was an assist function that they thought would be great. Well, I'm thinking about the, uh the complete elimination or mostly elimin elimination of the urologists in the future. But that, that's, a great, that's a great intermediate step, I think, in the future, in the, in the far-term future. I, I think that's more, uh, it's coming. I mean, it's in, invariably that is coming. Sure, I, I, I agree that the technologies will continue to increase. Uh, I probably wouldn't go so far as to say that the urologists wouldn't be required in the equation at all. Uh, I just don't think that, that maybe that's where we're going. But, uh, but certainly what we can do is make the urologist's life better, faster, easier to get the right diagnosis for their patient. And that's what we're, that's what we're aiming for. That's perfect. Better, fast, faster, easier. And that's what we try to do here at the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And as always, I will leave the contact information for the device and also maybe uh, Randy. And uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thank you, Randy. Thank you.